You know that vague region in Northern California that encompasses just about everything? The Bay Area? Yeah, well, it's home to some of the best urban exploration out there. From abandoned buildings to tall skyscrapers to underground tunnels, you name it, this place probably has it. When I got my license at the age of 16, I quickly became obsessed with adventuring. So I started searching all around San Jose and the Santa Cruz Mountains to find just about anything to explore. There was just something really exciting about discovering a place that a very few amount of people knew about. And of course, I had to update the gram. One time I was with some friends driving up from Santa Cruz towards Half Moon Bay when we saw a bunch of buildings on the side of the road that looked like they had been abandoned. We pulled off the road and started exploring what turned out to be an abandoned mushroom factory. This place was huge. After hours of exploring, we still hadn't seen half the compound. We actually finally turned around because we didn't have enough cell connection and we were worried our parents had texted us. Of course, per usual, we had lied where we were going. Anyways, this adventure really sparked my love for urban exploration. I started spending hours online browsing the internet to find any clue to an abandoned spot. And by browsing, I mean deep web searching. Like I would look through pictures of a place I wanted to find until I found something that stuck out of the ordinary, like a sign or a weird looking building. Then I would find comments on some obscure form that would hint at what city the place is in. Then I would search up all records of decommissioned buildings in that city. Then I would scroll through Google Street View and satellite image until I found a building that matched that photo. It was a ton of work finding abandoned places. I found so many places that I created a map to keep track of them all. It now has over 300 secret locations on it. I began hanging out with people who enjoyed adventuring just as much as I did, and we got a little more serious about documenting the places we went to. I actually ended up becoming best friends with these guys. We would drive hours to find an adventure, our map beginning to extend its reaches beyond California, the places we went to getting more and more insane. Finally, we ended up creating a blog together to share our adventures with everyone we knew. It's hard to put into words why we were so fascinated by old, ramshackled places. There is something intriguing about exploring buildings full of remnants from the past. Like this gigantic warehouse we found right next to the bay a couple years ago. It was like an adult playground. There were ladders to climb and someone had even set up a swing. And the coolest part was this old piano in the middle of the place. I mean, come on, that's awesome. I think the art we'd see in these places also added to our affection for urban exploration. There was this one warehouse that Brendan and I stuck into a few years ago that was entirely covered in the most spectacular graffiti. The place opened its doors a while back to some of the most talented street artists in the Bay Area for an art exhibition. When we went, it had been closed for years, but Brendan and I found a way to hoist ourselves into the second floor window and get inside. Getting into these places was an adventure within itself. One time while sneaking into old grain silos, we had to traverse across a destroyed dock. I'm not exaggerating when I say this dock was on the brink of collapse. There were holes everywhere, and if you didn't look, you'd get a rude awakening from the ocean below. After getting across the dock, we had to climb over and under multiple fences, squeeze through holes, and climb ladders and stairs until at the top of the silos you could climb out and see a spectacular view of San Francisco. And if that wasn't exciting enough, there was a sketchy bridge connecting the two buildings, sitting 20 stories above the ground. We became addicted to the adrenaline rush you'd get while exploring these places. This other time when we found an empty water tank covered in graffiti really gave me a thrill. I was determined to climb into the tank, since my friend Brendan didn't get into it when he had visited a month prior. Brendan and I always had a friendly competition over extreme stuff like this, and I was determined to do what he couldn't. Now he's a professional cliff jumper doing triple backflips off cliffs, so I think we know who won. Anyhow, to get inside the tank, you had to lower yourself onto a peg about four feet down. And the issue was there were no ladder rungs to lower yourself down with your hands because they had ripped out of the wall. That's how sketchy this was. I finally just decided to swing down to the first rung where my feet were and made it to the bottom where there was all kinds of junk like bowling balls and shopping carts. Getting up was even scarier because the wind was blowing really hard and I couldn't reach the top of the ledge. Anyways, I got out fine, but in hindsight, this was a bad idea. 18-year-old me didn't really understand repercussions. I just kind of cared about what was hype. I think most of all, why we enjoyed urban exploration so much was the hidden society behind it. Urbex isn't something that can be taught. It's something you have to learn by doing yourself. Anyone can buy a plane ticket across the world to go skydiving, but urban exploration isn't something you just pay to do. 
We found some incredible places and made unforgettable memories, and while people might find these places dirty or scold us for trespassing, we didn't care.